tiny bit obsessed with crochet blankets and in my 13 years crocheting I've made a lot of blankets including this stack down here of nine different crochet blankets. In this video we're going to go through each of them one by one. I'm going to share the details of how I made them with you so that you can too. I'm hoping that this video will inspire you to start a new crochet blanket. So let's jump straight into it with my most recently finished crochet blanket and that is the Hexadaisy blanket. This blanket is entirely my own design and it's made up of these hexagons with daisies at the centre, then surrounded by cream and whip stitched together. And then along two sides of the blanket, I did these half hexagons to straighten those sides. And then along the other two sides, I sort of let the hexagon be to leave that sort of zigzag shape for the border because I thought it was quite pretty. And then around the edge, I did this Pico border. So this blanket has a bit of a special place in my heart because it's the first blanket that I designed for Mima Makes. I started posting as Mima Makes in autumn last year and then I came up with this design in November, December and then I finished this blanket in May this year, so May 2023. And then I've since released a written pattern that's suitable for beginners with plenty of photos, bullet points and tips. There's also video tutorials on this channel for the hexagons, the half hexagons and the join. And I will link all of this down in the description along with a little blurb about each of these blankets so that you have all the information there that you need to replicate them if you want to. So this blanket is mainly made using a yarn called Starcraft Special Double Knit that's really popular in the crochet blanket world. Um, it's fairly cheap, it's soft and it washes and it cares for really easily. So I used Stylecraft Special Double Knit for these, the daisy centres and the colours and I used 11 shades of Stylecraft Special Double Knit and then for the light blue, I didn't actually have any Stylecraft Special in blue in my stash when I was making this blanket so I did use a shade of James C. Brett Double Knitting with Merino which is a little bit like Stylecraft Special but with some Merino in there so it's a little bit softer than Stylecraft Special. And then for the off-white creamy colour that I used for the daisy petals, the join and the border, that was another shade of James C. Brett double knitting with merino, like a creamy off-white shade, because I don't really like the white or the cream in the Stylecraft Special double knit line. So I chose to use this colour instead. And like I said, I'll put all the information about this blanket with all of the links down in the description. So moving on to the next blanket, we're going to be going backwards in reverse chronological order of when I finished them. So the other blanket that I finished in 2023 was my giant sampler blanket. So I can't show much of it on the screen, so I'll put some footage in. So this sampler blanket is made using 49 different square patterns and I found most of the patterns for free online on Ravelry. I do have a video about how I made this blanket and how I search for patterns that I'll link down in the description. But yeah, every single one of these squares is different and I absolutely love this blanket so much. It is my most favourite crochet project I've crocheted in all my 13 years crocheting. I love it so much. The colours, the patterns, everything. It is beautiful. And I think that it summarises my crochet journey up until this point as well, because there's so many different stitches and skills in here. So I did have to alter a lot of these patterns to get a similar stitch count and size so that they could fit together. And then for the join, I came up with this sort of lacy join as you go technique. And I do have a tutorial for this on my channel. I really love the width and the colour of this border. I think it really brings those squares together into a cohesive blanket. And then the edging, I designed this myself as well. I thought big scallops would really set off this blanket nicely. I really loved scalloped edge like quilts and pillowcases and things like that. And I wanted this to be a lacy scallop and it took me quite a few tries but I did eventually come up with this scalloped border. I haven't yet released this as a pattern or a tutorial because initially when I did it, it was curling inwards quite a lot, but now it's been washed, dried and used, it has flattened out. So I will be doing a tutorial for this scalloped edging in the future. So in terms of yarn, again, I used acrylic double knit yarn. I used quite a few shades of Starcraft Special Double Knit as well as some really pretty warm pinks and this lovely coppery brownie orange here, which are shades of Hayfield Bonus Double Knit. 
The edging is Style Craft Special Double Knit in Warm Grey, so that grey edging. I think I used about six or seven balls for the, the join in the edge. And then I used one shade of that James C. Brett Double Knit in with Merino, that's this greeny colour here. Like I said, I love this blanket, it's my favourite. I'm not sure I'm ever going to be able to make a blanket that I love as much of this blanket, but you might see me eating my words in the future. So moving on to the third blanket I'd like to talk about. I don't think I've shared this blanket on the, this channel before, and that is my summer picnic blanket. So it is bright, it is happy, it is fun, and it is easy. If you're looking for a beginner project, this is the way to go. So these six round solid granny squares are joined together with a single crochet join in cream and then the edging is just three rounds of double crochet. I have got a written pattern for this blanket and I do have a tutorial for the squares and the join on my YouTube channel. I will link it all down in the description. So I started this blanket in lockdown April 2020. I was working at the hospital during that lockdown and I was a little bit stressed. I needed something easy and I needed something happy and I think this blanket was the key. I would literally go to my acrylic double knit stash, pull out a random colour, make as many six round solid granny squares as I could and then I'd move on to the next colour. It was easy, it was mindless, there was no colour planning whatsoever and I think it came out pretty good. The only colour planning I really did is that I knew I wanted it to be bright colours and I knew I wanted to include this navy colour here. It comes across as black on camera I think but it's definitely a navy colour. In terms of the exact yarn I used, I used a whole range of different brands of double knit yarn, acrylic double knit yarn that I had in my stash, including Starcraft Special, Hayfield Bonus, there's some King Cole in here, this turquoise colour, I've got no idea, I bought it without a label in a charity shop, so I've got no idea for some of these, but again, I will list as many as I know down in the description for you. As much as I like this blanket, I think it is a little bit too bright for me. I'm usually about those autumnal colours, so I wouldn't necessarily use this blanket in my home. So it hasn't been used since I finished it last December. And I'm thinking now that I'm probably going to add it to my to gift pile with some of potentially some other of these blankets as well. But this one's a definitely to gift pile. I just need to have a proper photo shoot with it because I don't actually have any great photos of this blanket. And I would actually like to have a picnic on it given that I started to crochet it because I wanted the patchwork picnic blanket. So I should probably try and have a picnic blanket, picnic on this blanket at some point. So yeah, that was my third crochet blanket to share with you. And moving on to the fourth blanket, this one, again, I love this blanket so, so much. And it's not made with acrylic double knit yarn. Ta-da! So this is my kind of, I call it like honey sweet hexagons, I think, on Ravelry. I think that's a really good description of it. Because although it is really colourful, and I actually use 24 different colours in this blanket, I think it does come across as warm and golden. And that's kind of what I wanted from this blanket. Like I said, it's using 24 different colours and they are shades of a yarn called Debbie Bliss Baby Cash Merino. And you heard that right, there is cashmere in this. I think it's 10%, but I might be wrong. So yeah, so there is cashmere and merino in this. I think there's some, potentially some polyester or nylon in there as well. So yeah, it's quite a luxurious yarn and it's pretty expensive now. I bought most of these colours as discontinued. When they discontinued a shade of Debbie Bliss, it ended up going for like half price online. So I was like, oh, I love that colour. Oh, I love that colour. Oh, I love that colour. And then eventually I was like, right, what am I going to do with all of these despondent colours that just don't really, there's no cohesion to it. So I ordered a couple of neutrals full price. It was a bit like, because at the time full price was like £4.50 for 50 grams, so pretty expensive. So yeah, so we ordered a few neutrals, and I think it sets off the rest of the colours beautifully, and those neutrals really make some of these colours pop, and I really love that I included this burgundy colour. I do this a lot with my blankets, is where there might be one or two colours that don't necessarily sit with the other colours, so it might be brighter than the other colours, it might be warmer or cooler, or quite often it's a darker colour than the other colours and I think that really gives e the blankets a pop so there's a tip for you for blankets or crochet or if you're doing any 
sort of work with a lot of colour, having some contrast in there it really does help those colours pop. So get into how I made this blanket. So these are four round solid hexagons. They are my own design but I have seen other people crochet these sorts of hexagons online before. I am going to be doing a tutorial for this blanket in the new year so let me know down in the comments if you're interested in this tutorial. So as with my um, hexadaisy blanket I did use half hexagons to straighten up two of the sides but on the other two sides I left it as zigzags. So these hexagons, I actually sewed them together with a stitch called whip stitch. So whip stitch is sort of like an over stitch. And I've done that for a lot of my blankets because I just think it's a really easy stitch. And I kind of like the look of it with those sort of stitches going through it. But I did this join through the back loop. And I think that's what makes these hexagons almost look like they've got sharp edges because I did that join through the back loop. And then for the edging, I chose crab stitch or reverse single crochet. I really love the look of this stitch, how twisted it is. And I love that it doesn't matter what your stitch count is because you're just working one of those reverse single crochets in each stitch. Reverse single crochet sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. And I will do a tutorial for this border in the future and for the rest of the blanket. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to see that. Now, the thing about this blanket that I love is the drape. I don't know if it comes across on camera, but it is so drapey compared to my acrylic blankets and it's got weight behind it because of that wool. And I have made the decision to move away from acrylic yarn, so I will be experimenting with some other fibers for blankets in the future. So the next blanket is my Chunky Starbursts blanket. And I've called it the Chunky Starburst because I used chunky weight yarn for this blanket with an 8mm crochet hook. And you would think that this blanket would not take as long as it did because it was on an 8mm hook. But it did. It took me years to finally get around to finishing off the border of this blanket. So the granny squares are called the Sunburst or Sunflower or sometimes Starburst square. And it's a really popular motif that a lot of people use and you might have come across it before online. It's like a normal granny square but in the centre we've got a round of double or treble crochet depending on the pattern that you're following, then a round of puffs and then a round of cluster stitches and then the final round squares it off into a square. And I really like this motif because it's got a lot of visual interest. Again I use Stylecraft Special because they do they're set the same colours in a few different weights of yarn. So I used their chunky range for this. I used probably 12 colours. I, I tend to go for 12 colours in a lot of my blankets. So I probably used 12 colours. And then the colour that I used to join them and for most of the edging is parchment, which is kind of like a greyy colour. It's like a nice neutral colour that's not cream. And then the border is just single crochet and then that final round is single crochet again but in the colour gold and the problem with this border is it curls like mad because I did not turn my crochet over between rows. If you ever have crochet that's curling like this that's on a blanket I'd recommend doing some rows from the back because that often will fix that curl. So I do have a tutorial for the square of this blanket that I will link down in the description. It is one that I took from my TikTok though, so it is a portrait tutorial, but there are plenty of other tutorials out there for this square as it is so popular. The one last thing I want to say about this blanket is yet again, I joined the squares with whip stitch. I don't know why, it's quite an obvious stitch, but I do quite like it. My favourite stitch is mattress stitch. That's a stitch that gives you like an invisible join, but I do quite like whip stitch as well. So let's move on to the next blanket, which I am very proud of this blanket. It is just very, very busy. So this next blanket is my Sophie's Universe blanket. Look how intricate all these crochet stitches are. This is not one of my designs, this is very very complicated and it is called Sophie's Universe by Deirdre Ewis. i am probably pronounced that wrong, I apologise. She's from Look What I Made and this was a crochet along that ran in 2015 and then in August 2016 I started this blanket. I saw some online that people had finished from the crochet along and I knew I had to make it 
and I learned so much making this blanket, so many tricks and techniques and textured stitches and layering rounds up to make leaves and petals and all sorts. There's lots and lots of flowers in this blanket. If you know anything about me, I love flowers. So the yarn that I used was again, Starcraft Special Double Knit and a four millimeter hook, like so many of these blankets. Um, and I really love the color choices that I did for this blanket. I didn't actually intend on using this many colors when I started it. I did intend on using only those warm colors, but I found that as the blanket got bigger, sort of this circle got bigger, I thought it was a bit samey. So I ended up ripping it back and adding in some greens and like a duck egg blue. And I think that really makes those darker colors pop. And again, I have got a pop color of burgundy, which is as the second blanket, I've got a pop color of burgundy. I do love burgundy. So as much as I'm very proud of this blanket, it is too intricate for me. Looking at it, it is so busy that I don't like having it out on the sofa or on the bed or anything because it makes me feel a bit frazzled and not very calm and cozy. So this is going to be gifted at Christmas to one of my family members who has requested it and I'm sure that she will love it a lot more than I have. The other thing to say is I did also stop the blanket early and added in a different border. So we're down to the penultimate blanket now and the last two blankets are granny square blankets. I am obsessed with granny squares, I love them. So this does not surprise me at all. So this was my third ever crochet blanket and it is fairly big as well. I would probably say this is about single bed size. And the thing that I remember about this blanket is that it took forever because me as a new crocheter, I, I'd been crocheting maybe two years before I made this blanket, as a new crocheter, found some four ply yarn on sale and thought, I'll make a blanket of that. It's discontinued, it'll be fine. Oh my goodness, this took such a long time to make and there were so, so many ends. So the yarn that I used was um, Sublime Extra Fine Merino 4 ply, which was discontinued just before I bought the yarn for this. That's how I got enough to make a blanket is they were just having sort of like a, a sale. Um, and I used, I think it was seven or eight colors inspired by another a blanket that I saw on the Little Cotton Rabbits blog, that I'll link down in the description, which was a green version of this blanket. Um, but I went for blue rather than green and I think that was the right decision. It also is quite calf kidston-y and I'm not as into calf kidston as I used to be when I was younger but at the time these colours were my jam. I loved them. I loved them so much and they matched all of my calf kidston stuff and my bedding and yeah I really love this blanket. It was a permanent fixture on my bed for years and years and years and what I love is that this blanket is now I finished it in 2013, so it's 10 years old. So this blanket is 10 years old and there's barely any pilling. There's a couple of ends that I've had to sort of snip or poke back in, but apart from that, it's not come apart at all and there's barely any pilling and it lived on my bed for so long. So I do think that extra fine merino is a great fibre for blankets if you want them to be long lasting. However, try to get the merino that's got a lot of extra twist in it. This is this is a four ply yarn, but there's a lot of twist in it. And some merinos do have quite a lot of twist in, and that should prevent sort of pilling and wearing. The other thing to say about this blanket is I didn't use a pattern. Um, it was just a granny square that I already knew how to make, but I actually made these granny squares a little bit differently to how I make them now. And I've completely forgotten the blanket that's in the car. There's a blanket that's in the car that is blanket number 10 that we'll have to go through at the end of this video because I completely forgot about it and my partner's out and he has it in his car. So at the end of this video, we're gonna have a bonus blanket. There's actually 10 blankets in this podcast. That It was a granny square as well. So that's what sort of triggered that. So anyway, back to this blanket. So I make the granny squares a little bit differently. I have got tutorials for granny squares on my channel. Um, but I do two things differently now with that I didn't do with this granny square. So with this granny square, I did chain ones between those clustered along the sides. Now I don't do that because I find it makes the granny squares too stretchy and holy. And to join the squares, I did do join as you go, very similar to my sampler blanket. But when I did those sort of slip stitches, um, I did them between the groups 
of three along the very last round of the granny square. So that blue round at the end of the granny square. And then for the border, I actually came up with this really simple shell border myself and I just thought I should probably do a tutorial for this because it's a very easy um, shell border that you can add to sort of any granny square blanket so I will do that as a tutorial at some point. So am I going to make a blanket out of four ply again? I always thought no, however I've now got a lot of sock yarn which is four ply and four ply is fingering if you're American it's the same. So I have got a lot of sock yarn, so I could make a blanket from sock yarn. So I'm currently <laughs> considering that, even though I said I would never ever make a blanket out of four ply again, I'm actually considering it, so yeah. So it's the next day and I got that forgotten blanket out of my partner's car. So this blanket is my granny love blanket. And as you can see, it is a giant granny square blanket. That's where you start in the center and you work granny round out and out and out until you have a blanket sized square. And I do think that a blanket like this, a giant granny square blanket, is really perfect for a first blanket. So if you've never crocheted a blanket before, or even if you've never crocheted at all before, I think a giant granny square blanket is a really great place to start because you don't necessarily need to learn any joining methods or anything like that. It's just all crocheted in one and you keep going until the blanket is the size you want to and then you stop and add the border. And that's why I love granny square blankets. The other thing about giant granny square blankets is they look amazing in any colour palette. So if you've got some colours that you don't necessarily think go together, try making them into a giant granny square blanket and you might surprise yourself. The colours that I chose for this blanket are autumn inspired, but not necessarily a pure autumn colour palette. What I did with this blanket is I paired some of those rich, deep autumn colours like the coppery oranges, the golds and the warm browns with some more pale and muted colours that aren't necessarily um, autumn colours such as a minty green, um, and a really soft pale lilac and that gives it that contrast like I was saying previously with those autumnal colours and I really really love the colour palette for this blanket. I actually came up with a design for this blanket because I needed something to cover my lap. I became a part-time wheelchair user in 2022 and I wanted something small but quick that I could make to have on my lap when we went to the park. And that's why this blanket is only one metre squared, because any longer it would get tangled up in my wheels. The other thing that the park, the autumn park, inspired for this blanket was this gorgeous border that was inspired by sort of fallen autumn leaves. It's a lacy scallop border, but I added a pico to the very centre of those scallops to make them a bit more pointed like leaves. It's not very obvious on the ones on the side. But if you can see that one in the very corner, I think looks quite leafy. So if you're looking for a beginner blanket, I recommend you start here. I have four tutorials for the granny square for right and left handed. I also have a tutorial for the border for right and left handed. And I have a written pattern. And if you've never crocheted before, I do have a tutorial for this blanket that starts with the crochet, crochet basics. You don't need any prior crochet knowledge to make this blanket. I'll take you through everything step by step. So I will link all of that down in the description. Now let's get back to the rest of the video. And then the final blanket to go through was actually my first ever crochet project. I learned to crochet in it was either October or November 2010. I was having some mental health problems and I was looking for something to sort of do to keep my mind busy. I discovered crochet, I discovered the world of crochet online and knew that that was what I wanted to do. So after a little bit of practice following some YouTube tutorials, I made this blanket as my very first crochet project. And again, it is in Stylecraft Special Double Knit. And this blanket has been washed and tumble dried quite a few times. So it is looking quite tired now compared to my other Stylecraft Special um, blankets. So I was originally inspired to crochet from the Attic 24 blog. And I actually started this blanket around about the time that she um, put up her now famous Granny Stripes blanket that was made in Stylecraft Special Double Knit. And that post almost went viral if things could have gone viral back in 2010. Like there was just, there was a lot of interest in this blanket then. And there were people making blankets using the same colors as her. So yeah, I was pretty inspired. And then I found a picture online of a granny square blanket. And I was like, right, I want to do that. I don't want to do granny stripes. I want to do granny squares. I love granny squares. So I ordered some Starcraft special colors and I did not think 
about how these colours would work together. I just ordered some colours that I like the look of online. I didn't really think about it too hard. Um, and when I finished it, I didn't really like the colours, but I was so, so proud of myself for this blanket. Um, I think it's nine colours of Stylecraft Special Dub in it plus the cream. And like I said about the Stylecraft cream, it's quite yellow um, around the edge. And yeah, I I followed a YouTube tutorial. I couldn't tell you what one. And then I had a granny square blanket. And then I followed Lucy's um, written photo tutorial for a slip stitch join on the back. So on the back, there's a ridge where I slip stitched my granny squares together. So although I don't use this blanket anymore and I probably wouldn't in future, I don't want to get rid of it or gift it because it's my first ever crochet project and that's special to me. So yeah, I have, I lent it to a friend actually for a couple of years as long as I got it back. So she had it in her living room for a bit. So yeah, I still have this blanket. It's not going anywhere. It's probably gonna forever stay under my bed now because it's so worn and I'm not massively keen on the colors. So that's all of them. Which one was your favourite? Let me know down in the comments and I will see you in the new year for a whip update.